Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. I'm Rhys Bramwell, nutritionist for Urest. This is where we focus on health and well-being, covering the key topics in nutrition, but also sleep, exercise, mental well-being and sustainability. Today we're going to focus on hydration, which is an often underrated area of nutrition. Drinking enough fluid contributes so much to how we feel day to day and is a really simple habit to create and provides noticeable benefits. Hydration plays a big role in so many bodily functions, which you can see listed here, but you could add several more to this. As a workplace caterer, we're always looking to improve the health of the employees that we serve, so that top one is key. Keeping fluids topped up really improves productivity as it helps us perform to our best in both a physical and mental capacity. So cognitive performance is a really great benefit to staying hydrated. But others include temperature regulation, removing waste products, nutrient transportation, digestive function, prevention of kidney stones and infection. Our bodies are around two thirds water and our brain is around 70% water. So naturally we need to keep a steady intake of fluid. So if we don't maintain a consistent fluid intake, we can quite easily become dehydrated. Even being dehydrated by just 1% can show significant negative effects on mental and physical function. We have some very familiar signs listed here with key considerations being poor concentration, as a recent study showed mild dehydration impairing mental performance to a similar degree as being over the drink drive limit, which is quite a scary um, finding. As you can imagine, this takes on particular importance if you work in settings where there are plenty of high safety risks. A number of studies suggest significant decreases in mood too, as tiredness and irritability take hold. I'll talk through some top tips later to help us in a practical sense, but I think the key is not waiting until you feel thirsty. Often when our stomach rumbles, we think of hunger straight away, but this can be a sign of dehydration too. The easiest way to monitor our hydration level is the colour of your urine. The clearer it appears, the more hydrated you are. So if you regularly notice a dark yellow colour, it is worth making a conscious effort to drink more. So how much should we be drinking on a day to day basis and what counts towards this? According to the Eat Well Guide, we should aim for six to eight glasses of fluid per day, which equates to around 1.6 to 2 litres. If you have a physically active job or do some form of exercise regularly, or if it's a warm day, you should definitely consider increasing this to make up for the fluid loss from sweat. Obviously, water is the best source of hydration, but you can vary your intake using different drinks. Reduced fat versions of milk are a really good source of calcium, so use skimmed or semi-skimmed are perfect choices. Fruit juices as well, but try to stick to 150 millilitres portion per day. This contributes one of your five a day and making your own smoothies is a good option because they contain more fibre usually with the extra pulp, skins or even seeds added to them. Soft drinks are good too, they also count, but you should focus on sugar free versions. I would try not to go overboard with these because they don't provide as much positive nutrition that you might get in your juices, smoothies, milk and water. Hot beverages like coffee and tea do count towards this total. It's worth being aware of caffeine, especially in the evening to prevent you being disrupted during the night but we'll mention these in a couple of slides time too. We also get around 20% of our fluid intake from food as well, so that helps towards this total. Alcohol doesn't count because it has more of a dehydrating effect. So that brings us nicely onto drinks to the limit or possibly even avoid. And there are a few things that we should be aware of on this list. So energy drinks are to be avoided. Although their title suggests a boost of energy, this is a very short term fix and will not provide the benefit for very long. Not to mention the sugar and caffeine content in a lot of these products. Even the sugar free versions, there are high levels of stimulants like taurine in there too. 
These products are shown to cause sleep disturbance, which brings other issues, especially the following day. Also try to avoid the high sugar fizzy drinks, as even a regular size can can contain around seven teaspoons of sugar. Alcohol, as we mentioned, has a diuretic effect and ultimately makes us more dehydrated. So if you are having an alcoholic drink, but want to try and stay hydrated, try alternating with a glass of water in between. Sports drinks are effective when training or competing at a high level, when sweat losses are high, because you might need those electrolytes to be replaced. But in daily life and lower intensity exercises, water should be sufficient. And generally, um, sports drinks can contain quite a fair bit of sugar as well. So as we mentioned, fruit juice, try to stick to 150 milliliter serving because that's to, we need to be aware of added sugar, but also excessive natural sugar. If you imagine a 150 milliliter glass of orange juice would require around three oranges. And of course, we th throw the majority of the fiber containing parts away in the pulp, which um, is a lot of the nutritional benefits that we lose in juices. Other products like milkshakes and ready-made smoothies often have added sugar too. So always look for that no added sugar label. So there are quite a lot of myths around hydration. So I thought I'd cover some of the most common ones that I hear of, just to prevent some of the confusion that you can see when you see some of the headlines around hydration. So the first one is that it's easy to drink too much water. So the answer to this one is it's not easy to do that. Technically it is possible to drink too much to a point it becomes harmful, but this is extremely rare. There have been a few cases when people follow extreme detox diets, but this isn't something we should worry about under normal conditions. So caffeinated drinks dehydrate you. So caffeinated drinks have been said to have a diuretic effect, but this has to be in really high consumption. If you are sticking to two or three cups a day, then it won't be a problem. And as we mentioned before, if you don't want to disturb your sleep, just try not to drink them in the evening too close to bedtime. So the next one is water is a great way to detox. So we don't really like the word detox necessarily, but staying hydrated does help our body transport waste and remove it efficiently. But we wouldn't recommend detox diets necessarily as balance is always the best option. Especially because a lot of these detox diets remove other really valuable, important food groups, and it's important to keep all of those intact. So, as you have heard, water is, a great, is great for hydration, but other drinks do count towards fluid intake as well. So you haven't got to worry about your six to eight glasses fully being from water. Bottled is best is one that I hear quite a lot. So nutritionally, bottled and tap water are very similar, but may vary in taste. So if I'm honest, just consume whichever one you prefer. Um, as long as it helps you to stay hydrated, continue drinking whichever one. So I'm just going to run through my top tips for hydration, things that you can do day to day to improve your hydration levels. And again, create that habit that we need to improve the way we feel day to day. So keeping a bottle of water nearby is a really good one, especially at work. So at your desk or at your workstation, depending on what your job is, always try and have access to that bottle of water try and get through it before lunch and then refill and have it again in the afternoon. And having access to refill or purchase more is really important to um, give you a chance to get more drink if you need it. Adding flavour is a great one. Often water can get quite boring, but you can really improve that with the addition of fruit. You could go for lemon and lime, you could go for cucumber, or you could even use herbs in there as well. Having some little flavours infusing in there can really help you to drink more and encourage you to, again, keep topping up as well. Adding ice or keeping refrigerated. 
So a lot of people prefer their drinks cold and find it easier to drink more of them. So adding ice, especially in the summertime, is a really good way to keep yourself hydrated. Starting the day with a drink is really important. Often overnight we become quite dehydrated as generally we're not drinking that much while we're sleeping. So starting the day with a good couple of glasses is a really good tip, whether that's a cup of tea and a glass of water, that's perfect just to rehydrate you ready for the start of the day. Drinking with every meal is a good one to get into the habit of doing as well. It's a good chance to have a little break, stop, eat your meal. And again, you could even get a glass in before your meal and a glass afterwards just to keep those levels topped up. And as we heard earlier, you do get a slight bit of hydration from food too. Also, if you're feeling really tired, feeling like your energy levels are really low on a particular day, try to consciously pick up your um, glasses of water and drink more on those days just to try and re-energize um, and help you get through your day um, if you're feeling a little bit tired. So finally, I wanted to move on to Nourish Life, our healthy lifestyle website. So the great thing about this is it's all researched and written by nutritionists mainly. And then we get experts from the exercise world and sleep as well to write our articles. So if you ever want a bit of health and well-being information, this is a great place to go. We've also got some really interesting healthy recipes on there as well. So I've highlighted this mango lassi recipe. But you could mix this up with all different types of fruits that you like as well if you wanted to change from mango really refreshing and obviously provides some vitamins and minerals from fruit as well we've also got an article specifically on hydration on our nourish life website on that link but thank you very much for listening to this hydration webinar i hope you got some new ideas and a bit of new information from it Please tune in to Future Wellness Wednesday activity on this YouTube channel and on our social media pages. Thank you very much for listening.